Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar introducing SEI's WeAdapt climate change adaptation platform and um, showing you ways how this different ways that this can support you in your work. Um, I just wanted to alert you to the fact that we're recording this webinar. I hope that's okay with everyone, um, mostly for training purposes and so that we can probably share this on the SCI Knowledge Management Hub and on WeAdapt. Um, okay, so we can get started. So it's great to see everyone here. I see lots of familiar names and some not so familiar names. So hopefully this will be a presentation that um, really introduces the platform, but also shows some of the new features and functionality that some of the people who already know about the platform probably don't know about. Firstly, I'd like to introduce the core team from SEI in Oxford. Um, although we do have many more core members across SEI and in other organizations globally. Um, hi everyone, I'm Christina and I've been part of the knowledge management team of WeAdapt since December 2019. Hi everyone, um, great to see familiar faces as Sikona said. Uh, so I'm Julia, I've been working with WeAdapt since late 2015. Um, as well as content management, I've been contributing to the development of the platform through projects such as the uh, Adaptation Altitude Programme, which is funded by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. Hello everyone, I'm Robin. Uh, I've been supporting WeAdapt since last summer, uh, mainly to add new content to the WeAdapt website and also the Adaptation Without Borders website, which is a WeAdapt microsite, but you will learn more about this uh, later in this uh, webinar. Good morning everyone, I'm Ruth and I've been an editor and been involved with WeAdapt since it was launched in 2007. I edit a couple of themes, the vulnerability and the climate adaptation training themes. And I'm Sakena and I coordinate the strategic and technical development of the platform and the development of new tools and services, including WeAdapt microsites. And Richard Taylor is also a core editor, but he's on leave today. So today, what we want to touch on is a, a few key areas about We Adapt and the challenge that it's trying to address, what it is, how it works, and what it can do for you and your climate change adaptation and sustainable development work through our learning, sharing and connecting ethos. We'll also discuss how you can get involved and we'll have time for questions at the end, but feel free to start adding questions to the chat um, as we go through the presentation and we can also address those at the end. So how did we adapt come about? We're all dealing with information overload and that's not new, but we're also working in information silos and this information is fragmented and it's basically really confusing for users. We recognized this early on in our climate change adaptation knowledge sharing work almost 15 years ago as well as the danger of replication and redundancy across projects and across initiatives, as well as a lack of learning about good practice that's already out there, what works and what doesn't work. And this is really why We Adapt came about. In a nutshell, We Adapt is an online platform that helps you learn about new and relevant resources. It helps you to share your work with others globally and it helps you to connect with experts and peers working on climate change adaptation issues. It aims to accelerate learning, knowledge exchange and collaboration for climate change adaptation research policy and practice. But one of the key things is that we don't just assume that providing more information will, will result in more or better adaptation action. Instead, a large part of We Adapt is about collaborating directly with partners, supporting capacity development and building networks, collaborations, and also sometimes creating new um, additional tools, purpose-built tools. For example, We Adapt strives to increase the connectivity of knowledge online, e.g. through linking platforms and increasing interoperability between platforms, as well as being open and free for all to access. We also try and increase the discoverability of knowledge through more standardization in how content is described and shared. And this is actually part of some of the research on knowledge management that is being conducted at SEI Oxford. We develop We Adapt by spending a lot of time understanding the needs of our users and responding to feedback. We co-develop not only the content and the thematic areas, which you'll see described in a minute, 
but also a lot of the features and functionality. We respond to day, on a daily basis really to feedback from users and we work directly with our technical development team. So established in 2007, Weird Apps are actually one of the longest running global platforms of its kind. Um, we did some surveys uh, led by Richard Taylor and, and other colleagues in SEI over the last few cycles of the Adaptation Futures Conference. And in each of those surveys, we adapt was amongst the three most highly used knowledge platforms by people working on adaptation. WeDAP's audience has grown year on year. Um, so here you can see some stats that show kind of the ever increasing number, but also the, the diversity of members, organisations and content on the platform. And our members include researchers, practitioners, uh, government and public sector officers, but increasingly also students and people working in the private sector who are looking for you know, background information on climate change right. and knowledge to help them move forward. So on Weird Apps, knowledge is organised into thematic areas and networks. And the aim here is to help users understand the key topics within adaptation and how to support focused communities of practice around these different topic areas. The development of and additions to these thematic areas has happened kind of organically over the years as both our research and SEI and that of our partners who are involved in the platform has evolved. The management of these spaces is distributed, so each theme and network is managed by an editor or a team of editors in some cases uh, who wishes to drive learning or grow a network around that specific topic. Uh, so here you can see some examples. Uh, we have thematic areas on, for example, human mobility, adaptation decision support and social vulnerability, all of which are core to SEI Oxford's research. We have one on community-based adaptation that's led by IAD, who also lead the international conferences on community-based adaptation. We also have themes not shown here, but on national adaptation planning, which is led by IISD, who hosts the National Adaptation Planning Global Network, and one on adaptation in mountainous regions, which is led by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, for example. Uh, and there are a number more, um, including those led by colleagues in SEI. So within each of these spaces, we share knowledge in two key ways, um, as detailed articles and as case studies located on our map, which shows who is doing what and where. And Christina's gonna say more about that in a minute. Um, to support adaptation locally, we also provide um, downstyled climate data uh, and provide guidance on how to use that climate information for adaptation planning. Uh, this is provided for a collaboration with the Climate Information Portal at the University of Cape Town. And it's just one example of how WeirdAT can be used to build capacities and support act action on the ground. So, um, as mentioned by Julia, WeirdAT's main type of content, or the meat of WeirdAT, so to say, um, are articles and case studies. So I'll give you a short overview of these uh, two types of contents. As you can see here, the basic structure um, of such article is um, made of three sections. So firstly, we have an introduction, then we have a method section, and then we have key messages. Uh, it is possible to comment on and discuss an article um, in the forum section. Um, and uh, each article has a link to download the report, which also provides a very useful information on how many times the content has been downloaded. Um, the page also highlights contributors and contributing organizations uh, so that we can ensure that um, they are visible and they can be contacted for networking or even to provide uh, further information. Uh, we also have a keyword section to ensure um, that the content is easily uh, discoverable on, on the platform. So all of this content, articles, case studies, organizations, people and keywords, can be searched on the platform. We also have advanced filters that allow you to drill down into the knowledge base, for example, by sector, hazard, or adaptation context. Um, on top of the curated synthesis previously mentioned, articles and case studies can include all kinds of media and um, including, sorry, guides, videos, courses, and so on. We also draft specific introductory 101 style articles on various thematic areas, whether gaps have been highlighted by users or if there is a demand from the climate change adaptation community in general. Um, this article synthesizes and provides an easy entry point for key and emerging topics in climate change adaptation. 
So here you have some examples uh, on transformation, financing adaptation and maladaptation. Um, this type of article has proved actually quite popular and we are currently developing further, further modules uh, on this. Um, on another point, we actually try to be as inclusive as our capacity allows, especially when it comes to language. We have published articles in Bahasa Indonesian, in French and in Spanish, and um, all our content is also available in multiple languages because we have a, a Google Translate plugin integrated in the website, as you can see on the top right. Um, as mentioned by Julia as well, uh, we adapt continues to grow organically and responds to feedback uh, and new emerging topics. We recently uh, received suggestion that we actually should create maybe a theme space dedicated to climate change adaptation and health. Uh, but lately we actually have created new themes. Here you have the example of the thematic area on human mobility that has emerged in the context of a Sidon Innovation project between SCA Asia and SCA Oxford. Another example is that we've upgraded our climate adaptation training theme. Um, which we create in which we create open source training material. This is, for example, guidance, toolkits, uh, 101 material, um, and so on, which is sourced from across SCI and across We Adapt. So, for example, there's videos introducing and describing SCI's WEAP model, and there's also articles from new SCI learning and training materials, such as the SCI Asia. Uh, massive online uh, open courses and the census projects. And we also have material that we've added and sourced from external partners, such as IAD, for example, as you can see here, the resilience toolkit for cooperatives and courses from the University of Cape Town. We also have a discussion forum feature in We Adapt, which is used for dialogue and peer to peer learning between participants. So anyone who's registered on We Adapt con contributes to forums where you can ask questions, share news, add events such as webinar, webinars, and also it's been used for uh, participants to respond to Weird Out based training modules. These discussion forums are connected directly to the articles and the case studies so that users can comment directly on the content. Um, so our aim really is to support climate change adaptation research by enhancing visibility and impact of all the publications shared on Weird Out. Through this effort, contributors know that a small investment in their time sharing their publications actually results in We Adapt extending the global reach of their work much further. Um, we achieve this through uh, well-structured content that is easily discoverable in web searches, through our social media and through our newsletter. The number of We Adapt social media followers actually continues to grow. Uh, we currently have over 6,500 followers on Twitter, 4,000 followers on Facebook and more than 2,000 on LinkedIn. And we systematically share new contributions on all our social media channels. We also have a newsletter which is distributed around twice a month, um, both to subscribers and to the IISD mailing list. So this allows approximately a further 6,000 views. So through all of these efforts, We Adapt's global reach continued to grow in 2020 with over 100,000 100, new users, uh, or new visitors rather. And we have a very diverse audience with visits from over 200 distinct countries or territories annually. Um, an estimated 88% of all visits are still coming from um, new users, which means that We Adapt continues to grow significantly. And here you can see the breadth of We Adapt users from different cities, countries, and continental subregions um, globally in 2020, as well as the top 20 cities and countries visiting the platform. So to summarize, We Adapt's open for all. It's free for everyone to use. There's no paywalls. Um, it aims to be inclusive of and support all voices. I, anyone can contribute to We Adapt. We have a quality checking procedure, but it is there for everyone to have a, a platform for their voice and their research. Um, but of course, it is challenging to gain contributions from grassroots. And that's something we'd quite like to discuss with the with our colleagues across SEI. We that focuses on enabling learning, supporting capacity development and facilitating peer to peer connections and networking to really help facilitate effective climate change adaptation on the ground. Um, the platform helps make connections between relevant 
topic spaces um, to help users understand those in interlinkages and to counteract the siloing of knowledge that can arise through focusing on specific topic areas. So how can you get involved? Um, if you are keen to, it would be great to have people register on WeAdapt. This means you can have access to the newsletter. It means you can post in a discussion forum. So if you've got relevant webinars, things like that, WeAdapt is there to kind of help get those messages out. You can use WeAdapt to discover new content and connect with new partners and proposals and new research. Um, you might find people that you wouldn't find in other networks and platforms. You can become a contributor, so adding an article or case study about your research. I say so WeAdapt has quite a unique network, so it's just another way of getting visibility for all the great work that SEI is doing uh, on adaptation and related issues. Um, you can share learning resources, so we have this dedicated uh, training theme that has proved really popular. You can also share resources that you found useful, and uh, WeAdapt there is there to support a community. So also sharing things that you found useful with others um, is a great way to have impact. You can become an editor and highlight new areas of research. So as mentioned before, there's been discussion around having a new thematic area on climate change and health. So that's also a possibility. Um, and you can use WeAdapt in your projects. So this is something we do a lot at SI Oxford. We use WeAdapt new network spaces to build and support networks around topics as a resource for providing resources to stakeholders, a resource hub. Um, and there's some more examples coming up and you can get in touch with us to find out more about that. Um, as the Ken and Robin are about to explain, WeirdUct has um, several additional services that are also useful to SEI projects. So I'll hand over to Kena to say more about that. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, so there are more advanced ways that we're also supporting partners in their work uh, on adaptation and related issues. This is either through our own knowledge management experience and sharing our lessons learned on knowledge management, on either developing capacity on specific topics and network building, or by tailoring and packa packaging knowledge to make it more appealing, usable and accessible. Um, for example, through new tools and visualizations. One of these approaches relates to the fact that projects sometimes do still require their own branded online profile and we adapt can't provide that through its current the way it currently shares knowledge for partners so we recognize this but we also know how long it takes to build a community of practice online to build a social media presence and to generate the new content that's needed when a project's just starting up to address this issue, we, we created this new service called Microsites, and these are basically fully customizable websites that have a unique look and feel, but which are actually built on top of WeAdapt. So that means they use the same technology and infrastructure, and therefore they're linked to our content audience and network, but it also means they're extremely cost effective to set up, maintain, and the knowledge management costs are fairly low. These are more flexible in terms of the content they can host in that they don't need to be directly tied to climate change adaptation issues, but at least related to the field of sustainable development. And really that's a kind of case by case um, basis on which microsites have evolved. Some examples um, are two SEI initiatives. One is We Transform, which stems from the Transforming Development and Disaster Risk Initiative led by the Asia Centre. And the other one is the Adaptation Without Borders network. So what is the Adaptation Without Borders uh, network? So AWB is a global partnership launched by SCI, uh, ODI and IDRI in, uh, in 2019. And it focuses on the implications of transboundary climate risks for uh, economies, societies and environments. So one of the main uh, priorities of AWB is to raise awareness about transboundary climate risks and to really pool knowledge uh, on this issue. And the AWB website was co-created by the WeAdapt and AWB teams. So the website is divided into two main sections um, in which you can find different types of content to that on WeAdapt, which is also an example um, of how a microsite can offer different functionality. So in addition to a research and evidence uh, section that allows visitors to read briefs, uh, reports, uh, papers on issues related to 
transboundary climate risk, which is a type of content that you can also find on WeAdapt. Uh, in addition to that, the AWB website also offer, offers uh, a news and event section that profiles um, short pieces on transboundary climate risks, uh, risks such as blogs, for example, as well as events uh, that have taken place or will take place um, in the coming weeks. So beyond this, we've also created more advanced microsite interfaces to better support um, decision making and climate action. Here we have a map that provides examples of adaptation to climate change in the energy sector. This map is built on top of WeAdapt uh, and WeAdapt's map, but it actually has different filters to classify adaptation case studies according to industry sector, the type of resource, the type of energy and um, adaptation, as well as the location which the WeAdapt map provides. Another example is the Climate Change Knowledge Hub developed for the Islamic Development Bank. This is a dynamic curated online repository of national level climate action information for ISDB's 57 member countries. Each member country has a national profile, including information on international and national climate actions and commitments, financing for actions, vulnerability assessments and adaptation planning and uh, other relevant case studies and reports and national climate data. So another microsite is the adaptation altitude space. Uh, this again highlights the different designs these microsites can have and how they can be tailored to the specific needs of the project. So this microsite was put together for um, SDC's adaptation altitude program. It provides an online home for the program with background information about it, its approach, partners and news on upcoming events. And in time, the site will also share outputs from the program that will also be mirrored on Weird Out to maximise their visibility. So they'll appear on both these spaces in parallel to make sure that they are as discoverable as possible uh, by people we want to find them. Uh, it would also host a new database on climate change adaptation solutions for mountainous regions. Um, this database will provide a new interface with new functionality for exploring numerous solutions according to various attributes. There are lots of different filters and ways of digging down into the data. So to elicit solutions for the database, we also developed a custom built survey that can be used to auto generate formatted solutions for a database of so putting all of that data straight into articles that can then be edited more easily. This is all functionality that new partners could leverage. So please get in touch if any of this is of interest. Um, another service we are providing is on knowledge legacy. So too often we see really useful knowledge disappear or become fragmented when these project websites go offline, when the funding to, to host and run them runs out. So WeAdapt offers a long term home for these resources. So, for example, we worked with a USAID um, Asia Pacific project to put the, gen put the gender source book on WeAdapt before their project website stopped being supported. This source book is an interactive textbook providing guidance on including gender considerations and women's empowerment in large scale adaptation projects. So it's now hosted on WeAdapt so it can continue to support capacity development around this important topic going forward. When it comes to tools, um, we adapt and our approach to working with users and co-exploring needs has also led to the development of several new tools to support adaptation decision making. For example, the SCI Climate Services Initiative resulted in a framework for scientists, climate scientists and decision makers to work together to co-design climate services. And this was translated into online guidance which actually pulls WeAdapt resources into each stage of the tool, the tandem online guidance tool, as you can see here. And lastly, another example is that SEI also leads the development of the Placard Connectivity Hub, which provides a highly visual interactive overview of the adaptation and disaster risk reduction landscape to enhance knowledge um, search and discovery. This supports the interoperability and linking of knowledge between five different platforms, and this aims to reduce the silos and knowledge fragmentation that we mentioned at the outset. More and more platforms are joining the hub now, uh, including the Global Resilience Partnership. And WeAdapt is, of course, one of the key platforms sharing knowledge on the hub, which is another way to ensure high, high visibility and outreach for any content shared on WeAdapt. So how can you get involved now? Um, 
So a first way would actually to start with us offering you, your centre um, a topic specific training on WeAdapt. Um, a second way uh, that we can work together towards um, increasing the visibility of your work. So this could mean simply sharing an article or a case study. It could also mean uh, becoming the editor of a theme on We Adapt or a network. And it can also mean, as presented by Sikaina, um, increasing the, the legacy of um, the knowledge products um, beyond the project life cycle. Um, and in this line, you could also start a microsite for your new product with We Adapt. Um, and one last tip would be to um, use the tools that we have for climate change adaptation research policy and practice. Um, so thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, we now have some time for some questions and comments, so the floor is yours. Thanks.